I'm Mitt Romney, and it's an honor to be back at St. Anselm. Hopefully I'll get it right this year. And I uh, appreciate the chance to be with you and to welcome my wife. And uh, I have five sons, as you know, five daughters-in-law, 16 grandkids. The most important thing in my life is to make sure their future is bright and that America is always known as the hope of the earth. Thank you. Governor Romney, I want you to come in on that point. Is 5% overly optimistic? And is it fair to compare the United States economy, a fully developed economy, to the Chinese economy, which is still in many ways developing? Look, Tim has the right instincts, which is he recognizes that what this president has done has slowed the economy. He didn't create the recession, but he made it worse and longer. And now we have more chronic long-term employment than this country has ever seen before. 20 million people out of work, stop looking for work or in part-time jobs that need full-time jobs. We've got housing prices continuing to decline, and we have foreclosures at record levels. This president has failed. And, and he's failed at a time when the American people counted on him to create jobs and get the economy going. And instead of doing that, he delegated the, the stimulus to Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid, and then he did what he wanted to do card check, cap and trade, Obamacare, re-regulation. I spent my life in the private sector, 25 years. And as I went around the world, this is an important topic. I went around the world. We'll have a lot of time on the topic. You, you, you can tell how, how to get jobs going in this country, and President Obama's done it wrong. And the ideas Tim described, those are, those are in the right wheelhouse. Governor Romney, just yesterday, Governor Pawlenty, who was to your left on the stage tonight, I called your Massachusetts plan, which you know has become a focal point of the criticism in this campaign from your friends here, uh, Obamacare. Obamacare. Is that a fair comparison? Uh, you know, let me say a couple things. First, uh, if I'm elected president, I will repeal Obamacare, just as Michelle indicated. And also, on my first day in office, if I'm lucky enough to have that office, I will grant a waiver to all 50 states from Obamacare. Now, there's some similarities and there's some big differences. Obamacare spends a trillion dollars. If it were perfect, and it's not perfect, it's terrible, we can't afford more federal spending. Secondly, it raises $500 billion in taxes. We didn't raise taxes in Massachusetts. Third, Obamacare takes $500 billion out of Medicare and funds Obamacare. We, of course, didn't do that. And finally, ours was a state plan, a state solution, and if people don't like it in our state, they can change it. That's the nature of why states are the right place for this type of uh, responsibility. And that's why I introduced a plan to repeal Obamacare and replace it with a state-centric program. Uh, Governor Romney, about the auto industry, uh, General Motors and Chrysler have rebounded since the Obama administration bailed them out. Bankruptcy is no longer a threat. Would you say the bailout program was a success? Uh, the bailout program was not a success because the bailout program wasted a lot of money. About $17 billion was used unnecessarily. When the CEOs of the auto companies went to Washington asking for money from Washington, I wrote an op-ed and I said, look, the right process for these companies is not a bailout, not a big check from Washington, but instead letting these enterprises go through bankruptcy, re-emerge, getting rid of the unnecessary costs that they had, the excessive debt, re-emerge, and that would be the preferred way for them to be able to get on their feet again. Instead, the Bush administration and the Obama administration wrote checks to the auto industry. Ultimately, they went through the very bankruptcy process that I suggested from the beginning. But the big difference was $17 billion was wasted, and then President Obama, given that money, was able to put his hands on the scales of justice and give the company to the UAW. There is a perception in this country that government knows better than the private sector. That Washington and President Obama have a better view for how an industry ought to be run. Well, they're wrong. The right way for America to create jobs is to, is to keep government in its place and to allow the private sector and the, and the, the uh, energy and passion of the American people create a brighter future well, for our me, kids and for ourselves. Let me read you, Governor, just a little bit of an op-ed piece you wrote back in November 2008. If General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler get the bailout, you can kiss the American automotive industry goodbye. From a profit standpoint, they're doing pretty well right now. On that point, kiss goodbye. I understand you disagree with the policy. Kiss the industry goodbye. Were you wrong? Uh, no, I wasn't wrong, because if you read the rest of the op-ed piece, it says what they need to do is go through a bankruptcy process to shed unnecessary costs. If they just get paid checks after checks in the federal government, they're going to be locked in with high UAW costs, legacy costs. They'll never be able to get on their feet. They have to go through bankruptcy, and it turned out that that's finally what they did. And the head of the UAW, he wrote a, a, an op-ed piece saying Romney's wrong, the government has to step in and give him a check. That's the wrong way to go. Use the process of the law. 
Use the process of American ingenuity. Don't have government try and, and guide this economy. President Obama effectively killed government-run space flight to the International Space Station and wants to turn it over to private companies. In the meantime, U.S. astronauts would ride Russian spacecraft at a cost of 50 to 63 million dollars a seat. What role should the government play in future space exploration? I think fundamentally there are some people, uh, and, and most of them are Democrats, but not all, who really believe that the government knows how to do things better than the private sector. All right, let's go down and, to the floor. And they we'll happen to be wrong. All right, the role so of government will continue on the role of government. I was just in Joplin, Missouri. I've been in Mississippi and Louisiana and Tennessee and other communities dealing with whether it's the, the tornadoes, the flooding, and worse. Uh, FEMA's about to run out of money, and there are some people who say do it on a case-by-case -case basis, and some people who say, you know, maybe we're learning a lesson here that the states should take on more of this role. How do you deal with something like that? Absolutely. Every time you have an occasion to take something from the federal government and send it back to the states, that's the right direction. And if you can go even further, and send it back to the private sector, that's even better. Instead of thinking in the federal budget, what we should cut, we should ask ourselves the opposite question. What should we keep? We should take all of what we're doing at the federal level and say, what are the things we're doing that we don't have to do? And those things we've got to stop doing because we're borrowing $1.6 trillion more this year than we're taking in. We cannot, we cannot. We cannot afford to do those things without jeopardizing the future for our kids. It is simply immoral, in my view, for us to continue to rack up larger and larger debts and pass them on to our kids, knowing full well that we'll all be dead and gone before it's paid off. Makes no sense at all. Do you believe we will ultimately have to raise the debt ceiling? I, I believe we will not raise the debt ceiling unless the president finally, finally is willing to be a leader on issues that the American people care about. And the number one issue that relates to that debt ceiling is whether the government is going to keep on spending money they don't have. And the American people and Congress and every person elected in Washington has to understand we want to see a president finally lay out plans for reining in the excesses of government. You, you've heard on here a whole series of ideas about entitlements, and that's about 60 percent of federal spending. That's a big piece. That's a big chunk. Ideas from all these people up here. Where are the president's ideas? Each, each person has different ideas here. We can try them and try different ideas in different states and different programs at the federal level. But why isn't the president leading? He isn't leading on, on balancing our budget, and he's not leading on jobs. He's failed the American people both in job creation and Governor, in the scale of government, and that's why he's not going to be reelected. Governor, what happens if you, if you don't raise it? What happens then? Is it okay not to? Well, what, what happens if we continue to spend time and time again, year and year again, more money than, than we take in? What we say to America is, at some point, you hit a wall. At some point, people around the world say, I'm not going to keep loaning money to America to pay these massive deficits, pay for them, because America can't pay them back, back and the dollar's not worth anything in them anymore. In that circumstance, we've settled our, our future, uh, the future for our kids in a way that is just unacceptable. And so you're going to see Republicans stand up and say, Mr. President, lay down plans to balance this budget. If he does so, if we get Democrats to come to the table and, and honestly deal with the challenges we have, with the entitlement challenges, with the spending and discretionary accounts, with our jobs issues, and finally say, you know what, we really can't afford another trillion dollars of Obamacare. If okay, he'll be Governor. honest about these things, okay. then I think you'll see the, the kind of progress right. you'd hope to see. Governor Romney, one segment of Americans, in this case religion, but in any case, should one segment be singled out, treated differently? Well, well but first of all, of course, we're not going to have Sharia law applied in U.S. courts. That's never going to happen. We have a constitution. We follow the law. Um, no, I, I think we recognize that the people of all faiths are welcome in this country. Our, our nation was founded on a principle of religious tolerance. It's in fact why, uh, why some of the early patriots came to this country. And, uh, and we treat people with respect regardless of their religious persuasion. Uh, obviously, anybody who would come into my administration would be someone who I knew, who I was comfortable with, and who I believed would honor as their highest oath, their oath to defend and protect the Constitution of the United States. Are you a George W. Bush Republican, meaning a constitutional amendment to ban same-sex marriage, or a Dick Cheney Republican, who, like I believe the Congresswoman just said, says this should be made, this decision, same-sex marriage, should be a state's decision? Governor Romney, constitutional amendment or a state decision? Constitutional. Now gays are allowed to serve openly in the military. Would you leave that policy in place or would you try to change it? Go back to Don't Ask, Don't Tell or something else? Leave it in place? What you inherit from the Obama administration or overturn it? Well, one, we ought to be talking about the economy and jobs. 
but given the fact you're insistent, the, uh, the answer is I believe that Don't Ask, Don't Tell should have been kept in place until conflict was over. Take 20 or 30 seconds. If there's a Republican out there for whom this is important, who questions your authenticity on the issue? Uh, people have had a chance to look at my record. And look what I've said as, uh, as I've been through that last campaign. Uh, I believe people understand that I'm firmly pro-life. I uh, will support justices who believe in following the Constitution and not legislating from the bench. And I believe in the sanctity of life from the very beginning until the very end. Governor Romney, you're a property owner in New Hampshire. You're, you're, you, are, you are a New Hampshire property owner, but you also are for reducing our dependence on foreign oil. Uh, there are a lot of people in the state who are concerned about this project, but they also want to have energy independence. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't believe that land should be taken by the power of government to give to a private corporation. And so the right of eminent domain is a right which is used to uh, foster a public purpose and public ownership for a road, highways, and so forth. And so my, my view is if land is going to be taken for purposes of a private enterprise, that's the wrong way to go. Now, the, the, the right answer for us to have energy independence is to start developing our own energy in this country. And we're not doing that. We have, we have a huge find with natural gas. A hundred years of new natural gas has been found. More drilling for oil, natural gas, clean coal. We have coal in great abundance, nuclear power ultimately, and all the renewables. But it's time for us to have a president who really cares about finally getting America on track for energy security. I'm here with John Brown from Swansea, New Hampshire. He's retired from the U.S. Navy, 25 years of service. And right now he has three sons serving in the Navy. So you can imagine he has a very important question. What would you like to ask tonight, John? Osama bin Laden is dead. We've been in Afghanistan for 10 years. Isn't it time to bring our combat troops home from Afghanistan? Governor Romney, take the lead on that one. It's time for us to bring our troops home as soon as we possibly can, consistent with the, the uh, word that comes from our generals that we can hand the country over to the Taliban military in a way that they're able to defend themselves, excuse me, the Afghan military, to defend themselves from the Taliban. That's an important uh, distinction. But I want to say, first of all, thank you to you for the sacrifice of your family and your sons in defending the liberty that we have and our friends around the world. Thank you for what you've done. Congressman Paul, let me, let, me, let, let, let me continue, and that is, I think we've learned some important lessons in, uh, in our experience in Afghanistan. I want those troops to come home based upon not politics, not based upon economics, but instead based upon the conditions on the ground determined by the generals. But I also think we've learned that our troops shouldn't go off and try and fight a war of independence for another nation. Only the Afghanis can win Afghanistan's independence from the Taliban. Thank you. John, any, any one of the people on this stage would be a better president than President Obama. He has, he, has, uh, he has failed in job one, which was to get this economy going again. He failed in job two, which is to restrain the growth of government. And he failed in job three, which is to have a, a coherent, consistent foreign policy. We've had presidents in the past that had bad foreign policies. This is the first time we've had a president that doesn't have a foreign policy. And this hit or miss approach has met a couple of successes, like getting Osama bin Laden, congratulations. But a lot of misses, like throwing our friends under the bus. And that's why any one of these people who gets better known by the American people will serve as a president with distinction so over the if, future. 